and Hillary when we finally arrived at the latest Pixar movie and one that I was really looking forward to so much. So, this movie was another movie that was supposed to be released last year in cinema, but because of the coronavirus, it got put on to Disney Plus instead. So, it was released on Christmas Day, and I was able to see it then. Yeah, and yeah, sorry, this review has been really late. I've just been kind of busy with a lot of stuff recently, and I never really got the chance to, but, hope, but thankfully now I have. I am a folk so, and after and so after sitting on there and watching it, I can safely say that I think this is pretty much up there with the Toy Story movie, the incredible movie, and Finding Nemo, and all the rest is another fantastic Pixar movie. I absolutely adored this film, and I wanted it back in that much from this film. I thought it was going to be another really good Pixar Star movie, but not one of their best ever. But thankfully, they proved me wrong. Everything about this reminds me why I love Pixar so much and why their movies are always incredible. The story is fantastic. The characters are so well written. The animation is maybe the best Pixar has ever done, and the plot is genius. And also. Um, since this has been out for a while, I'm gonna go into full spoilers from the very beginning. So yeah, just keep that in mind as you're watching this. And so, what's the story? It's about a musician in New York named Joe Gardner, who's a professional pianist, and he's a music teacher in a school, but he's not very happy with his job because it's his dream to be a professional pianist performing with a band. But one day he gets an offer from an old student of his who's in a band to play for the piano with them. He gets the job, but his family, especially his mom, aren't very happy about it. He's still excited about it, though, until he falls into a manhole and dies. But then his show is brought somewhere called the Great Beyond, where it shows Joe after a person dies. He ends up being the Great Before, though, the place where shows are created and sorted out before getting sent to work. There, he gets confused with a, for a mentor for shows, and meets a new so named 22, who doesn't want to be a person. So, they make a deal that if 22 can help Joe get back to Earth, he'll make it so that she never has to become a person. And I'm going to stop the stop there for now. I'll get into the spoilers next session, but I want to stop the story synopsis there. So I'm going to go over, so I'm not going to lie, this film reminded me a lot of other Pixar movies that we've seen before, like Tokyo and Inside Out. In fact, this movie was directed by Pete Doctor, the guy who directed Inside Out. And it definitely has a style. He definitely knows how to make a story emotional and thought provoking. And the similarities between Inside Out and Tokyo are pretty, pretty obvious with the designs and the ideas of the great beyond feeling like the thing from Inside Out. And the and the, and it's pretty um, and yeah, and it's pretty obvious that like the whole music aspect about it reminds me a lot of Tokyo. You know, but it doesn't mean it's not it's not it's not like it's the same as though it's still obviously its own thing. It almost hundred it's almost kinda of hard to know where to start with this start with this movie in terms of the good thing in it. First I mean first first off the anime in a per perfect. This is in my opinion the best looking Pixar movie ever. They already perfected it textures and all that a long time ago, but you can tell they've really pushed the envelope more and more over the years and this is probably the pinnacle of that. Just a different look to the piece 
well in their clothing and the environment and even in the sort of cartoonier things like the designs of everything and the great beyond and the great before look so what kind of cartoony but they're still designed so well and very and they just look very cool that it's very creative and very cool to look at. And the characters as well are very likable, very funny and very real. But half the show the perfect. Jamie Fox boy is Joe and she does a fantastic job and Tina Fey does the voice of 22. I honestly had no idea who that 22 was a girl when I was watching it because I couldn't tell like the voice that she was doing was a boy or a girl but she does it so well and you just get really into her character as a result even if you don't really know that and a lot of that has to do with just how great the performance is and everyone else did a fantastic job as well. And because of the great performance, the emotional moments hit really hard. And the dilemma of the characters feels very real and I felt for them. The message is all so really heartfelt. The message of the film is to live life and enjoy everything about it and don't stay focused on one goal for the rest of your life because if you do, you might not appreciate everything your life has given you. And it's shown really well with that. And that leads into the emotional moment. I'll get, in, I'll get into that in a second though. First off, I want to talk about the great beyond before, I mean, the great before scene. I really loved everything about about it because, again, Pixar is able to think of these really creative and incredible things in a movie that makes it really inventive. And as a result, it just comes across as really entertaining and you just love the way the movie is shown and all that. And even and just the different ideas they have, like having the 2D looking characters on the crazy environment, it just really creative to look. Yeah, again, it just goes to show how great with their animation pet story. And I really love every love how they did that. And not only that, but they also managed to make the to make but kind of more but crazier things like when Joey falling into the great before just really cool and like how they implement it to the animation and that and just kind of him shifting in the various ways and it was really cool to see. But now we're getting to the things on Earth because there's a part where Joe and 22 get back to Earth but 22 is in Joe's body and Joe is in the body of a cat. Not only did I find this really funny but a lot of really heartwarming moments came from this part. Like, ha like there's a scene where 22 22 has to act as Joe in front of his mom who doesn't want Joe to be a performer because she thinks it to be a job. But 22 has to talk to her as Joe and is telling her what to, what, and Joe is telling her what to say as they're talking because she can understand what he's saying even though he doesn't have no that. But, but, and, but it brings to a really, really, um, emotional scene where Joe is pretty much giving out his thoughts about, about wanting to be a performer and how much it means to him, to his mom, with his mom finally understanding him. And a lot of that has to do with the fantastic voice performances I was mentioning. The movie's all so really funny. But, but, like, yeah, I know I like, mentioned how there are some funny moments here and there, but overall, the movie itself is really funny. I say the funniest part for me was anything to do with the character Harry. You can, it's kind of like the villain of the movie, but he's not really much of a villain, but he is still really funny. Just this um, character who is kind of wanting to get Joe back into the great beyond because he feels like he sees his death and all that, and so he wants to bring him back. And yeah, just a lot of things with him was really funny. And in terms of the, emo the other emotional moments, there's a lot of that. 
Um, but the biggest one for me are when, like I said, when Joe had to pretend to, when, I mean, when 22 had to pretend to be Joe in front of his mom, like I said, or another scene where 22 is experiencing some of the joys of life through Joe's body, like when she was sitting down and watching the helicopter leave. I found that pretty powerful. Another big emotional moment moment is right when Joe and 22 say goodbye to each other the first time because Joe is still trying to get back into his own body and when and when he gets his chance, 22 thinks he's taking her stand away from her because she's been through all the different things as him that made, that made her realize that she does want to be a person. Sure, they have a big fight, but it made even better when Joe goes back to Earth and and he begins to think about everything in his life and realizing that he made that he just had a best had a lot of great moments in his life and he never really or at least he never fully realized it before. That part was pretty sad, especially seeing his different memories like with his dad and so on. And then for a lot of visits to the pit started amazing and amazing and traditional fantastic storytelling. Especially since they've always been really good at visual storytelling. But the, but then it made all the better when Joe goes back to the great before and helps give 22 encouragement and they're both able to go back to Earth together. That, that was really sweet, though I do definitely wonder what happened to 22 when she got there because we never find out. And and when I say and what I say to Joe for I they don't exactly go back together. Joe goes to the great before go to the great beyond first and is ready to accept that this is the end for him until one of the Jerry, basically the being in charge there, decided to let him live again. And it was nice to see him get that other, to get another chance to live and he even said that he's going to live every moment of it. Which ties greatly into the message of the film. Also, I haven't mentioned this yet, but I always love but I also love the relationship that builds between Joe and 22. Yeah, it's another one of those relationships where the kid-like character is kind of whiny and doesn't want to do what the adult character wants and they, and we just see them help each other in some way. And in this case, Joe needs 22 help to, go, to help him get back to normal, but he's not very, but she's not very interested in wanting to do anything. But again, Pixar knows how to work around that cliche to the point where it feels fresh and likable. And really, just all the emotions they aim for hit this, hit on this really well. They do an amazing job with it. I will say, though, the one thing that's not a problem, that's not a problem for me, just, but something I found a little odd about the film again beginning the problem but I found it a little odd how how Joe kind of died in the first ten minutes of the movie. Like I said, the movie like at at the start, he dies and becomes a soul. And what I found strange about that is how it happened in the first 10 minutes of the film. I found that odd because uh, usually in a Pixar movie, the main obstacle for the main character usually happens in the first 15 or 20 minutes. Like in Tokyo when Miguel was sent to the land of the dead. But I found it a little odd how this, ha how this time it happened so quickly, so I kind of want to just see more of Joe in his life, like with his family, or just doing everything he wants, or just doing some other things before he died and went to the great beyond, or, or anything like that. So the frat bag was the first 10 minutes, I don't know, there's just something a little strange about that, I suppose. But yeah, you know, it's not really a problem, it's just something I thought I could mention. 
Yeah, but overall, surely yet another amazing addition to the Pixar library. It's an amazing concept done to a really fantastic execution, and I cannot recommend it enough. So, yeah, I would definitely say that you should go get this movie out. It's a really, really great movie, especially, like, if you have the Disney Plus account and you're able to go in, uh, go in and watch it, definitely do. It's really, really good. And I'm really excited to see it again really soon. And so, yeah, it was fun. That's my review of show. And so, yeah, it was thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all like this. And if you like this video, please like this video. Please comment down below to tell me what you think. Please, fo please follow me on Twitter at Daniel Maloney. Hey, hey, and Disney fan. I do Kingdom Hearts and Disney please every day. And please subscribe for more content like this coming soon. I'll see you on next time. Take care.